Hi there everyone, this is Lily coming to you with another tip of the week. And um, this week I'm bringing you a, a tip on harmony only, and this tip is on deform basics. And the reason I'm doing this one is that there was definitely some feedback on the forums that um, that the deform tool is really awesome and handy and, and that people want to get started using it. Uh, but some of the video tutorials are really in-depth and what they want is a quick start guide to how to just get up and running with Deform. So that's what I thought I'd bring you today. Um, and I apologize if there's any background noise because today I'm recording from a hotel room in California. So um, let's start out now by just doing something with two very simple shapes. So I'm going to go into my timeline and I'll keep my first drawing layer as it is named drawing and I'm just going to do a rectangle, nothing too exciting. Actually I'll make the um, <clears throat> size a little bit smaller by holding down the O key. And there's my rectangle. Beautiful. Okay, and then I'm going to do another drawing with another rectangle over here. And the reason I'm doing two rectangles is that I want to show you the difference between um, using a curve style deformer and using a bone style deformer, which are the two styles of deformer that we have available in Harmony. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to color these in. And then if I want to really show off how this is working, then I'll load in a texture as well. So let me just go and see if I can find uh, a texture that I can use here. I should have a paisley. There it is that I like to use. And I'll just fill that in on each one of these uh, boxes here so that I've got a texture that I can just show off how this is working. And now that I've got those filled and painted in, I can go ahead and get started with my deform tool. So I'll use this box on the left here to show off the bone style deformer, and then I'll use the box on the right to show off the curve style deformer. So it's really easy to get started with this. All you need to do is make sure that you have your drawing layer selected because it's going to automatically create a deformer on the drawing layer that you have. And then now you can select your rigging tool and then your setup mode. And um, let's explain this just a little bit really quickly. What happens is that when you're um, rigging something, like you're rigging a drawing, you want to have um, a mode or a state which is completely independent of your animation. And the reason that you need that is that sometimes you need to go back and um, adjust what the rig looks like. Like you might get partway through your animation and you're trying some stuff out and then you realize that the rig that you have isn't going to cut it. So then what you do is you go into setup mode which kind of resets it to its default state and then you can make adjustments on your rig and then you can leave setup mode and go back and when you leave setup mode it's going to pop you back to your animation. So, um, you know, well, that will become clear a little bit further on. But for now, when, we are, when we're getting started, if we're going to create a rig, we need to create it with our rig tool on. And then we click on setup mode just to go inside uh, setup mode to make sure that we are working in that mode and that we're not in the animation mode. Now, if I want to create a bone style deformer with my rig tool on and my layer selected, all I have to do is click. So I can just click once, which creates your first offset and I click again which creates an, uh, the first bone and then I click again and it creates an articulation in between the bones and my second bone. So I can, that's all I have to do, I can right away, I can switch from my rigging tool to my transform tool. You'll notice when you switch to your transform tool that it turns off the rigging tool automatically. And then I also want to switch off of setup mode so I can see what's happening as I animate. And then I can move this around and we already see stuff happening here. So there's a couple of basic things that you need to know about when you're working with bones. And um, you'll notice as I start to twist this to extreme angles that you see that it becomes kind of um, tessellated there. Uh, and the reason that it does that is because it's using this articulation in the center to sort of slice up the drawing into pieces. And then where it slices that drawing into pieces, when you rotate it, you'll start to be able to see those pieces you know like slice 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 as you rotate so um, you know it's it's ideal when you're working with a bone style deformer if you can increase the size that's the reason that we ask to increase the size of this articulation in the center so let's go into setup mode and then you notice um, I'll just turn that off again you'll notice if you have some animation on that part 
when you click on setup mode, it just resets that animation. And then when you leave setup mode, now it's back into your animation state. So let's enter setup mode and then we can use, we keep using our transform tool, we can use our transform tool to adjust the size of the articulation here. If I have my animate button on, it's going to create a keyframe there, so I'll just turn it off for setup mode. And then I can just drag on that articulation. And I'll make it about the size of my joint. And you see now, if you, if you think about this the same way that I was just describing a moment ago with the other um, example or with the previous step, it's now making slices of the drawing all the way along this articulation and then when I go let's exit setup mode you'll see how much smoother that is and in fact what I should do also is I'll go into setup mode because you'll notice when I'm back out here it has made this smaller and the reason that this is smaller is that while I was animating that's the size that it was before I left so in fact I probably want it to be something like this and um, so you can either adjust it directly in here, but if you, if you have many different keyframes, then what you would want to do is go into setup mode, and then you want to copy this position back to the animation mode. And that's what this option at the top is, copy resting position to current. And I just need to make sure that I select my deform group when I do so, or if you're working in your network, you can select your deform group over here. And then when you copy resting position to current, now that is my new sort of animation state. So as I leave setup mode, I can now animate from here. And you see how much nicer that is when you're doing animations. And then if we want to start talking about things like what happens when you overlap, um, that sort of thing, I want to leave that for a different tip of the week because I'm trying to keep these tips of the week really sort of short, quick tips and I think that's something that could be a separate module. But to finish up what we're talking about this week, I want to do another example now on the other drawing over here that's going to be a curve style deformer. So I'll select my other drawing. And remember, I have to go to my rigging tool, and then I have to enter setup mode. And now that I'm in that, I'm going to do something slightly different than what I did last time. Instead of doing a click, 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 I'm going to do a click and drag. But beware, don't click and drag along the whole length of your drawing because when you're doing this click and drag, what it's doing is it's creating a bezier handle on a curve. So if you drag it all the way across, then your bezier handle will be way too long. So you just want to do a small drag. So let's start at the top and I'll do a drag maybe about to there and you see how it creates my bezier handle. And then I'll go to the end of the drawing and I'll drag upwards and you can see as I do it it's showing me the handle so I can position the handle how I want it to be. Now that I've got that done I can exit setup mode and then I can switch to my transform tool and now I can move these points around to see this drawing you know being animated or how it's going to animate. And you see how beautifully this works on a drawing layer um, especially when you are not dealing with zones of influence. And what I mean by that is that in this case, all I'm doing is I have one drawing and I'm putting one deformer on it or, you know, like a series of them all in a row or all in a line. It works really well because we have an infinite, what we call an infinite region of influence. And what that means is that when you look at your, your curve or when you look at your bone, an infinite region of influence is just going to go you know, parallel or perpendicular out infinitely in all directions and affect your drawing. And that works really, really well with this. So I just um, showed you some of the deform basics and I just wanted to give you a little bit of inspiration now by showing how those basics can be used on an actual drawing. So I just want to show you what I've got here on my um, Stella drawing. And when I select a deform group here, I can easily show all of the deformers that are in that deform group by clicking on the button to show selected deformers and hide all others. So now if I click on that button, it's going to show the deformers. You'll notice when you first start up Harmony, after you close the scene, it's not going to show the deformers by default, it um, hides them. And so every time you open up your scene, you need to select the deformers uh, for whatever character or prop that you're working on. And as I'm sure you can imagine, um, deformers can be a little bit um, more taxing on the resources of your machine, which is why it's a good idea only to show the deformers that you're working on as you work. 
So um, then I just wanted to show you a little bit what I did on this character um, for fun to, um, to make her work. And so I have one curve style deformer that's going all the way around the outside of the hair. You can also, you know, bring the curve all the way around kind of in a circle around um, a drawing. And that's another way of getting um, the ability to sort of warp the shape of that drawing. And then I've got another curve style deformer here on the torso uh, so that I can warp the torso based off of a curve, which is really quite easy. And in all these cases, I'm just using a, an infinite region influence like I showed you in my, in my Getting Started uh, video. And then there's a bone style deformer on this girl. And you can see that the, the size of the deformation there, the articulation, is about the same size as the width of her arm which is what makes it really nice when I'm doing these um, you know, manipulations here on the curve. And I've also got some bone style deformers on her legs. So that's just a couple of quick things to do. I mean, what I would do if I were you is I would start out, if you want to get started, I would just start with a couple of squares the way that I showed you and, and practice on that. If you want to put deformers on things like tails or uh, you know, like mustaches, that sort of thing, then I recommend drawing the tail completely straight first and then doing a curve style deformer in a straight line and then you can warp the tail. It's better doing it that way than drawing it curvy to begin with and then making the curve match with the curvy drawing because when you do that sometimes you, your curve, uh, the line thickness and such will not necessarily be consistent. So it's better if you're going to do something like a tail to draw it straight and then put your curve on it and then you can warp it around. So that's it for this um, really sort of basic intro to how to use the deform tool. Um, as you know, or as you might know from watching Shabana's videos, there's a lot more to this tool. There's a lot more to know um, about how to use it and how to get started, especially if you're going to be doing multiple views on characters or if you want to be dealing with regions of influence. There's a lot of different things to talk about there. So if you want to know more information about the Deform tool, go and check out the Harmony Hub on the website. And you can get there through the Harmony section of the website. And then at the bottom there, it says Resources. And there you'll find the video tutorials that Shaban has done on the Deform tool. So go ahead and take a watch of those. And then if there are any further questions, don't hesitate to write on the forums about the questions. And I'll see if I... Um, can do specific videos to address those items that are still um, raising some confusion. So good luck and have fun!